Hi everybody, it's Tuesday the 5th of May 2020 and I haven't done an update for a very long time. My life has been going super well, better than I could have ever imagined. I actually can't believe that this is my one year anniversary from my surgery. Like it's crazy. I can't believe like it's been a year and I can't believe how much my life has changed in that year. So I'm just checking in here to let anybody that's um, just had surgery and is thinking, I don't feel better immediately, or anybody that is thinking about surgery, if you've got to that stage and you don't think you can hold it anymore, that if you can just get to that point of having your surgery, hopefully life will get better. Obviously, I can't talk for everybody. I can only talk for myself and my own situation. But obviously, if you look back on YouTube, you can see all of my journey from being in hospital for a year with PMDD to living my best life. So how to round up the last few months? There's so much to say. So I spoke at my local trust board meeting. That went really well. And they were really receptive to what I had to say. They have invited me to have meetings with the director of nursing because they are going to plan a conference for PMDD. And they also want to try and get some more integrated care pathways between gynecology and the mental health services in our area. So that is a massive win um, for PMDD. And what else have I done? So just to catch people up, um, Currently, the UK is in lockdown because of the coronavirus. So um, I was meant to be running the London Marathon. I'd done my training. I'd got up to, I think, about 17 miles by the point lockdown kicked in. Since lockdown kicked in, um, the London Marathon has been postponed. So I have kind of not been training. Um, I think the most I've run is three miles since lockdown, which was last weekend when... I ran um, 2.6 miles for Challenge 2.6, um, dressed as a uterus around my local area. I was also on the radio to promote that. Um, I got lots of support, raised way more money than I ever thought was possible running 2.6 miles. I think I'm uh, nearly at £400 now. And so I'm fundraising for the International Association for Premenstrual Disorders and also for the National Association for Premenstrual Syndromes. They're two charities which are really close to my heart. Um, so I thought it was really important to do something for them because charities, especially little charities, rely heavily on donations and fundraising and lots of events have had to be cancelled because of the coronavirus lockdown. What else have I been up to? Um, so yes, I've started a new job. I started working back in healthcare and I'm absolutely loving it. It's the best decision I ever made. I only work part-time. Thank goodness, because by the end of the three days, I am absolutely exhausted, which brings me on to my symptoms, my PMDD symptoms. It's been a bit of a struggle. I'm not going to lie. There's been many times when I thought. This is crap. I shouldn't feel like this. This is really crap. I didn't go through all of that to still be struggling like I am. But everybody had told me, you know, it'll be. A year to 18 months before things start to settle down, but I'm impatient. I wanted to be better the minute that I had that surgery. I didn't want to wait for my hormones to balance out. I'd had enough of hormones. I was done. But I'm here to tell you, you need to be patient. I know you've probably heard it a million times before. The day that I had that surgery was life changing. Things did get better, but they weren't magically fixed. There was still the years of trauma. There was still so much to process. There was still so much to do in terms of my body healing and recovering. And I still have my moments now, but life is manageable. And I'm finally starting to see the real me. Like I weighed myself today for the first time in months. I eat what I want when I want. Like my eating disorders thoughts creep in yes they're there but I manage them and I don't let them distress me anymore they're more fleeting thoughts than ruminating thoughts and when I weighed myself this morning I was pretty paranoid that I must have gained so much weight I thought oh my goodness I don't even stand on these scales and see what they say I hadn't even gained a pound 
I can't believe that I struggled with my weight for so many years. The whole time I had my PMDD, weight was a ma massive battle. I was hospitalized for anorexia, like to be at a point where I cannot stand on the scales and not weigh my food and not obsess over my food is, it's, it's heaven. Like I never thought I would reach that place. Um, it just seemed like a, a dreamy place that was just so out of my reach. I think you already know this, but I've moved house and I love it here. Um, me and my housemates take it in turns to cook. So we probably have two or three meals a week together. This week I've cooked a roast dinner, homemade lasagna and a chicken stir fry. So I'm feeling very domesticated because often a lot of the time I just eat things out of the freezer. So it's really nice to be able to cook for other people and to sit and eat and socialise with them. I've been doing lots of gardening whilst in lockdown because I know that that's really good for my mental health. So I planted lots of sunflowers. I planted some petunias, some strawberry plants, and they've actually got little strawberries on them at the moment. They're still green, though. What else have I planted? I planted pansies. I planted gladioli. Oh, I planted some verbena. And I planted some other things I don't remember the names of, but I will do a little garden tour um, when they've all come out because at the moment they're just like little shoots of seeds and of bulbs. The symptoms of my PMDD. So I still struggle with my sleep. I still have to pace my activity because I get really exhausted. So if I've done a long run one day, you can pretty much guarantee that the next day I will be spending most of it asleep. Um, classic example last week, I fell asleep at half past 10 in the evening and aside from waking up for about half an hour and to go to the toilet and get a drink at 10 o'clock the next morning, I slept all the way through until half past five in the evening. That was a grand total of 19 hours sleep. I would say that's pretty epic sleeping. I have come to terms with the fact that my energy levels are probably never going to be what they used to be. I've also come to terms with the fact that I have just got to get on with the symptoms that I get overnight and with my sleep and this is probably why I get so tired because I don't sleep properly ever since I went to the chemical menopause I've never slept properly I either go through having bouts of insomnia um I still have night sweats most nights really vivid dreams and disturbed sleep it's not ideal but I will take those symptoms over what I used to feel like a million times over I don't want to speak too soon, but I think my hormones are almost at the right levels. Touch wood, don't want to jinx anything. My last appointment at the menopause clinic in London had to be cancelled because of the coronavirus, but I'm kind of earing on the fact that I'd probably like to think that maybe I could get a testosterone implant next time I go down to London for an appointment. We did talk about it at my last appointment, and we also talked about having um, an oestrogen implant but I am not very keen on having an estrogen. I am not very keen on having an estrogen implant. I'm really worried about tachyphylaxis and um, the symptoms that if my estrogen goes too high. So I figured that whilst the Sandera gel was working, I just want to stay with that. Like I find it really good. Put two sachets on in the morning. Put two sachets on in the evening. And that seems to be keeping me stable and going well. The only thing that is more of a problem is the testosterone because I take it once every three days. And so you still get slight peaks and troughs. So that's why I'd really like an implant of that if possible. But if not, I'm happy to just carry on as we are. I was supposed to be having a one year post-op party this month. However, obviously coronavirus has meant that has had to be postponed. So I'm not sure when that's going to happen yet. But I'm trying to be optimistic about it because the further into the future it is, hopefully the happier and the more stable my life will be. So I'm actually able to start looking into the future now. Um, I'm hoping that in the next couple of years I can buy a house. And I also want to get onto the foster carer register and become a foster carer. Um, I've also done lots of um, outreach work with many mental health organisations and societies and with my local university. So yeah, that's all that I've got to say for now. It was just a very, very brief overview of what's been going on for me.
I just wanted to capture how things were one year post-op. I might try and record a couple more times this week just because, because it's one year post-op. But yeah, life's good. Please hold on if you are struggling. Please just know that life will get better. There were times when I thought that this was never going to end and I didn't want to be alive if it meant living with PMDD. But there are ways out of this and not everybody's treatment has to be as drastic as having surgery. Many, many women and individuals that struggle with PMDD are able to find successful treatment without having surgery. It's only a very small minority that need to have surgery. Please try every single option before you think about surgery. Okay, lecture over. Okay, bye everybody.